Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of How Many Things Can Go Wrong With The DRZ. If you haven't followed the story up until now, I've been having a couple of intermittent problems, which we didn't know if it was one thing or two things. And this is what made it so difficult. I had two separate problems, uh, both being intermittent. One of them was causing the bike to die, and in the previous video we solved that, and we also did the free power mod for the DRZ. Uh, and the other issue I was having is that it, well, the solenoid just kept clicking, like this. We traced it down and found that there was power going to the starter motor, but the starter motor wasn't kicking in. After doing a bit more research, as it turns out, the brushes in the starter motor in these bikes are known to go. What this causes is you go to start it, the solenoid clicks, and nothing happens. Now, you can smack the starter motor and give it a little shunt and the brushes will move in, uh, but you can only do that for so long before they're completely worn out, and it's also very annoying to have to stand there on a petrol station forecourt, kicking the side of your bike, trying to get the thing to start. I've been there a few times lately. Kick it. <laughs> it's got a kick start now. It's just you have to kick the side of the engine. So all we need to do is replace those bushes and the stars motor should work like new. Huge thanks to Wemoto.com. They're working with me on this video again. They basically just supplied the part. The part itself only costs about £15, so this is a very easy fix. But again, I was deeply impressed to find that Wemoto not only sold the starter motor of this bike, but they also sell just the kit to replace the bushes. Starter motor was 104. Uh, the parts were like 13. Why replace the whole start motor for no reason? So I'm going to just change the bushes. So in this video, I'm going to quickly whip the starter motor out of the bike. I just said that hope nothing goes wrong. And then we're going to go to the garage, take it apart, clean it up, put it back on the bike, and we should be done. Now, it's a bit hard to see at the moment, but down in there is the starter motor. Uh, it's basically like a, a bait bin tin sized thing with two bolts holding it down. Now, to get it out, we're going to have to take off the mid pipe and the end can and possibly disconnect a hose. But then there's just two bolts and it should pull out well, and undo the wire on the top. So let's just do that. And then you'll be able to see better once I get this off. We don't actually need to remove that much stuff um, to do this. I probably could leave this side panel on, but it's just going to be easier if I pop it off quick. Plus also the camera will love <laughs> this to help with the exposure. Because it's a bright old day and a big white plastic thing like this throws it off. There we go. And then loosen the exhaust clamp so we can get this off. I'm not going to undo it fully yet, I'm just going to get it very close, that'll be enough. And then undo the strap. And then in theory, when we take this nut off entirely, just pop that back on there so we don't lose it. This should just... Oh, no, 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 I forgot that one, that one. Okay, now that's undone. Let's chuck that bomber box. This should come out. Let's get the clamp off the easiest way. There we go. Give it a wheel, and it comes out. I don't know if this is standard, but my mid-pipe has quite clearly had a big dent pressed into it so it fits around the uh, the shock better. Don't know who did that, if that's a factory thing or not, but yeah. Just give this a quick blow. I have a little bit of an issue with my uh, mid-pipe connection where this pipe is a little bit too small to fit into that one and I have to fill the gap. And uh, it, it always, because of the just pure beef that this bike has, it blows whatever's in there out. I might have another go at getting that a bit better this time. Just trying to make my life a little bit easier here. And remove this hose. There we go. One more thing out of the way. Can we have to get a ratchet in here? Yep, just, oh, they've cracked off nice and easy. I did put a little bit of WD-40 on them before I uh, tried. Always a good idea, softens up any salts or anything like that. One bolt out. Oh, 
It's a little bit of a fiddly one. Two bolts. Okay, so this is the Stars motor from the other side. And basically, this is just press fit in here with a couple of seals. And there's a gear which engages with your uh, clutch starter pack. Starter clutch pack. Whatever. It, now, this should just push off. <laughs> which is kind of not doing. So, what I'm going to do here. It's a terrible angle, I know. Let's give it a tap. You see that pop? And now we are actually out. But we're not out yet because we've got to get it out the other side of the engine. Try and move the clutch cable aside enough to get this out. Don't fight it, just take more stuff off. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm having to basically disconnect the clutch cable because it is right in my way. Wind in the adjusters. Come on. There we go. This is one of the most fiddliest jobs I've ever done in the sense of how we have to try and get this out. But the actual job itself is really easy. I think we've got it now though. I think. Come on. <sighs> that was not easy. See, this has just one connection on the very top of the start motor because this is the positive. It gets its negative from being directly connected to the engine and the engine itself has got its earth. No washers? No. Like extracting Excalibur from the stone, but we are victorious. Now let's go in the garage where I can take this helmet off because I'm so hot. Also, you may notice that yes, I am being committed to the cause of trying to get you to buy some of my merch. Look, hoodies. I'm dying by a hoodie. Well, actually, t-shirt, summer, t-shirt. Right, well getting that out of the bike was a right royal pain in the butt. No question about it, but hopefully this bit should be easy. First thing I'm gonna do is quickly give this a clean off. Just going to use some brake cleaner. This actually was donated to me by a very kind subscriber. A load of other stuff. Just trying to get all the grease and the dirt off of it because it's not something you can get to very easily so it doesn't get cleaned that well. It's also because I don't want to get any of this grit or this dirt into the motor. So there we go, that's pretty good. Just give that a quick blow off the airline and make sure there's no more uh, bits of dust on there. Take that nut off. So here's the part that Wiimoto supplied to me. All this is, is a plate that lives in the back of the motor and here are the brushes. I'm not gonna to touch them because I've got greasy hands. Um, but they are what make contact and basically they're consumable and they've worn out. All the springs have become loose, we'll find out. But I guarantee you we're not gonna have nearly as much meat on the, uh, on the one that's in there at the moment. Now I've never actually taken a start motor apart before, but I've taken a few motors apart before and I don't think it takes a genius to work out that that screw, which is connected by a copper cable, that's out the way, is that screw that's sticking out the top, because that's the contact. So, we know we need to undo that. It's amazing how clean this all is under here, considering how long it's been there. Look, look at how clean that washer is. Okay, we've got some little like nylon washers, so it's... It's small washer, small washer, large washer, nut, and then the big nut goes on the top. Okay. Then to get this apart, we've just got to undo these two long screws which will go down to the bottom of here. Oh good, they're nice and loose. It's always a relief when something just undoes, it makes fixing things ten times easier. And we've got some little O-rings on here. So note we've got some little rubber O-rings at the base there. Yeah. Right, so I'm holding it together because I don't want to take this completely apart. I just need to get this back off. There we go. Pull. If you, oh wow! Yeah, I can't be taking this apart a bit more. Watch this. Is that dust? 
That's my brushes. <laughs> okay, so which way round does this go? Like that. Okay, makes sense. Oh, and this just lifts out. So is that screw gonna... Yep, with a little bit of persuading. The other small washer comes off. These are like fibre washers. Come on. Come on. There we go. Well, there you go, a comparison of old and new. So yeah, that's definitely why our starter's not been working. Now, I am going to give this a bit of a clean up. I'm going to use a bit of brake cleaner for this because it will evaporate so it goes away. Is there anything in here that's rubber that I'm concerned about? Mm, no, maybe that, but I'll put the finger over it. Okay, so that's the inside of that looking a lot cleaner. God, look at this. This is just all this basically brush dust. Carbon. Now an electric motor is actually very simple. It is a permanent magnet around the outside. You have the core, which is coiled wire. Uh, and then you have an electrode which touches onto this, which causes it to start turning, and that's how an electric motor works. It's only got like one moving part really, and that's just this that spins on bearings. Um, it should in theory just pop out. But it's going to be held in by the magnetic force. And that. Now I don't know which way round this thing goes, so I'm now going to have to be smart. Okay, yeah, that definitely went that way round. There's a good tip there for new people. If you have a part come off and you don't know which orientation it was, look for witness marks. Witness marks being the damage, the dirt, the anything that you can see that will allow, allow you to work out, oh, okay, well that fits in, matches up with that, and that matches up with that side, so we know that it goes that way round as in straight down. A little tip worth noting. I'm not actually going to spray this with anything, I'm just going to wipe all this dust off. Okay, so that's relatively clean. This, which has got a roller bearing in the end, a seal, seal looks alright, uh, and a lot of dust. A, lo a lot of dust. Yeah, I don't want to breathe this in actually. I'm going to get a mask and I'm going to blow this out. Okay, um, I've Okay, I think I'm going to go to a different pair of gloves, because this is getting filthy. In fact, actually, I probably won't need gloves at this point because I've cleaned everything. Okay, so it's now just going to be a matter of putting it all back together and making sure we put it back together in the right way. So this goes in here. No, it doesn't. This goes in there first. So that goes on the shaft. And then I've got to get that up through the middle. That little washer thing at the front appears to have sat in the right place, but I'm, we'll know when we're going to put it together because it won't fit. Uh, right, there was that on there, and that on there, like so. This goes up and through the rubber gasket, and that sits. There you go, it fits in perfectly, and then this should sit like so. Easy peasy. Then remember it went small washer, small washer, large washer, metal washer, nut, thin nut. Just hand tight, I don't think it needs to be any tighter than that. It's just got to pull into that rubber seal. So that's that, they're the long screws. We've got no parts left. The brushes themselves, the little blocks, are spring-loaded uh, and if you see they actually stick out into the area that this fills because they're new. So all I've got to do is kind of use that just to push them in slightly and get it in place and then we go. Oh, there you go, we've got, we got lines! Line, 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 line. So you can line it all up and it all goes back together. That seems fine. Turning no problems, feels a little bit stiffer, but that's because the brushes are now actually making contact. Well, while I'm just doing these up, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters who go down the side of the screen now. Uh, it is very, very kind of you to help support my channel, and it's only with your help that I'm able to really do this these days. I do, you know, what I can with the metal works and things. I'm a metal artist, by the way, I make clocks out of old sprockets and things. 
There's links in the description, you can check that out. But Patreon really is making a huge difference and making it easier for me to keep making these videos and bring them to you. Okay, I'm not going to do these up too tight, I'm just going to nip them. So there you go, one starter motor rebuilt. If you were to do a full rebuild on a starter motor, the only thing you can really do is replace the rubber seals in between, the brush brushes in the brush holder, um, this o-ring seal here it seals into the bike if that's perished you should replace that when you take it out this is absolutely perfect still I'm amazed at the condition of some of the stuff inside this bike considering how old this bike it is it's not that old but it's old uh, and it's been used and taken off road and all sorts and it's just amazing I forgot to explain exactly how this was causing the problem so the power comes down from the solenoid to this and then these connect directly onto the uh, I think it's called the commutator on the back of the motor and that is what drives the, the motor around when the power gets to it but because these are so warm they were not actually touching and the reason why you can smack a starter motor to make it work when it has this problem is basically because if you give it a smack the springs push them out just that little bit more or they'll just move them just a little bit so they get a connection when they get the connection it will fire up maybe slowly but it will work back in the 90s it was not unusual to see someone try and start their car walk around lift the bonnet up get a big hammer out smack the starter motor quietly put the uh, the bonnet back down get in the car and start it up for this exact reason um so yeah it's basically because the brushes were too short there wasn't enough of them being pressed into the commutator to make a connection and that's why it wasn't always starting and that was my non-starting intermittent fault goodbye so now it's just the easy task oh God, of reversing everything we did to get this back on. Um, so join me back in the garden and we'll get on with that. Okay, so now we have our fixed starter motor. We've just got to pop it back in. Just pop it back in. It's so easy to say that, isn't it? Just pop it back in. Just pop it back in. Uh, it's not going to be quite that easy. But we basically just have to reverse the process. Nip that up. Not too tight. Get a little rubber boot back over the top. As you can see, this has got a gear on the end of it. We just need to pop that back into the hole so it engages with that starter clutch pack. Um, it's very difficult for me to show you this, though, so you're just going to have to kind of believe me when I say... <laughs> okay. So we've kind of got it in the right place. Now, in case you're wondering, this is the oil I use in both my bikes. Reasonably priced, and I find it's good. Now, um, I just want to get a tiny bit of oil on my finger. And get it on that O-ring. Because O-rings seal better with a little bit of oil on them. There we go. So, what's going to happen now is from the other side, I'm going to push this, and it's going to slot into that hole once the gears have got in the right place. So push. Feels about right. Yep, just went in perfect. I don't know the torque settings for these, so when it comes to engines, I just give them a little bit of a nip up. It's hard to explain, but it's through experience you get to know how much pressure you should put on things. And it's not as much as you think. That's enough. There we go. So now what we've got to do is get the clutch cable back in its holder, get that airline back on, get this box put back in. And we're almost there. Okay, so I've just made sure everything is rooted as it was before. Now get these back on. Okay, so that's the clutch back in its little slot. We've got this hose to go back on. So that's all back together. Now for the clutch. Here's a little tip. When you put the pivot pin back in, don't just try and crank it straight down because there is an edge. And basically, the main body of this bolt needs to go through the lever. So you want to make sure everything wiggles as you're putting it in. Because you don't want to catch the edge and crush it because you'll end up splaying out the housing. Give it a little nip from the underneath on the nut. And then we're back in there. So what you want to do here is 
have this adjuster just slightly like half a turn a turn out so you've got a bit of movement that way and then get it basically right feeling make sure there's a little bit of looseness so it's not always pulling and dragging your clutch and then we use the locking nut to lock it in place this is like your course adjustment this is your fine adjustment and I'll have a play with that when I've got the bike running because then I can find the biting point but it's close there okay so just double check over everything hoses are back on clutch cables back in its place is adjusted hoses are rooted correctly cables are where they were before nothing's binding nothing's gonna rub that's reattached now I know what you all want me to do because you've noticed that we're in a position where we need to start the bike and there isn't anything on the end of here is there uh, I will do that but only only if you hit that like button just before I annoy my neighbours, let me remind you that you're about to hear the purest sounds of beef there is. You can also add beef to your bike with the beef keychain available from the links in the description. Also helps you get your keys out of your pocket. Oh, here comes a noise complaint. <laughs> okay, as it turns out, my neighbours are in their garden. I don't think they're impressed. Anyway, um, I just need to get some sealant, clean this up, and seal this and put the exhaust back on. So catch me once I've done that. Okay, this is what my exhaust issue is, and this is what my fix has been. Uh, basically, this pipe is just a bit too big compared to the, the pipe that goes inside it. So when you clamp it down, it never really seals tight. I've tried all sorts of different types of sealants and packing and blah, blah, blah. It just never really worked. So what I've made here is like a shim from some one millimeter uh, steel and I've fire gummed, which is a type of sealant, that inside here. And I've also filled in all the holes at the back with loads of fire gum. So when I start the bike up, it's actually gonna force it down in the inside. I've only just done this. So now what I need to do is clean up the header pipe, cover that in fire gum as well, and then clamp it all down. And in theory, it should clamp properly this time. I've also elongated these um, cuts just a little bit. But as you can see in there, that's the shim. I've made out of some one mil steel. Okay, so now I need to clean up this end, so I'm gonna use some emery. Emery is basically like a ribbon type sandpaper. It's absolutely brilliant for getting round things sanded. I'm not actually sanding the metal here, I'm just taking off all of the old sealant. But the little grooves that will be left will help the new sealant grab, hopefully. Now I'm going to put tons of fire gum on the inside all the way around. Okay, so I've popped the clamp on. Just hope that it all slides together. And we'll know when we're on deep enough because we're going to get this in. Okay, so we'll just get that in place. Okay, now clamp it down and don't go too hard because you can snap these clamps quite easily. I really want to start this now. I want to press that button and see if it sounds more peppy because my start motion has been a little bit sort of slow and poor. So I'm hoping it's going to sound much peppier. But I can't actually do that just yet because I need to let that sealant just set a little bit before I start the bike. So for you, it's only going to be a few seconds, but for me, it's going to be an hour or so. Okay, well, moment of truth. Hopefully this starter is now going to sound a lot more perky. So much better. So if you find that your bike is being a bit sluggish in starting, the starter motor seems a bit weak, 
just check how much voltage is getting to the starter motor. If it's okay, but it still seems weak, definitely consider looking at the brushes because it's made a world of difference to this. Anyway, huge thanks to Wemoto, as I say. Uh, if you need to fix anything on your bike, check out Wemoto.com because they've got an encyclopedic range of parts. I didn't realise they held such a complete stock of like DRZ parts and stuff like that. So definitely check them out. Prices are good too. Um, and say so thanks to them for helping me out with this video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. And thank you to you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that'd be helpful. Maybe turn on the notifications if you're already subscribed uh, and you haven't got that on because it means you'll get all my videos. But also remember to leave a like, it helps me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.